Today I'm super excited because one of the other big ideas out there, I guess concepts out there for talking about how to bring alignment to your space and your mindset and, and your clutter is the art of feng shui. And my guest today is Darina, um, I'm sorry, I just totally blanked your last name, even though I'm sitting here <laughs> looking at it on the screen in front of me, Darina Kors, and she is the space doula, which I love that name as well. It brings so many things, but Darina is a certified pr practitioner of feng shui and a uh, space clearing. She thinks of it as being a modern day Nancy Drew, which I absolutely love. I'm a Nancy Drew fan myself. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, she is, um, her intuition and knowledge combined with asking the right questions to help solve the mysteries about people's clutter rather than her teenage wit and uh, intellect. So I love that. Um, so she helps people get unstuck, but it's in this little bit different way, and I'm excited to see how that is. Most people know that feng shui is, um, you know, you, you can clear your clutter with feng shui or, or whatever the title of that one book was, but it's about more than that. So I'm super excited to talk to Darina today and, and find out what it's about. Um, you know, an open and clear home clears the clutter um, and opens possibilities for that alignment. So welcome, Darina. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, that's the part I always have to read. I'm not good at memorizing anything. So <laughs> now we can just sit and chat for a bit. But can you tell me a little bit about what um, got you into uh, feng shui and, and professional organizing? Because you, you kind of do both, right? I used to. I used to be yeah. a professional organizer. So it's such a good question. And it's been a really interesting route. Like I say that I've been feng shui probably my entire life. Um, when I was younger, I grew up a really chaotic house and I spent a lot of time in my room mm -hmm. and I wanted to feel a sense of control. I wanted to feel safe. And yeah. what I intuitively did was move my furniture around um, nonstop. And so I was actually practicing feng shui back then. Um, mm -hmm. fast after a stint in marketing in corporate America, um, I went to, I always wanted to be an interior decorator. It was where my true passion was like throughout college. Um, and I had an opportunity to join a interior decorating company and I did that and it was amazing and I loved it. And then my partner moved away and when she moved away, I was like, I can't do this by myself. She was the creative one. She was a watercolorist. She, you know, she had the eye for everything. And I was the one, uh, was more the muscles in the business. I was climbing ladders and hanging pictures and painting. Mm -hmm. And so she said, you know, you should really go into professional organizing because it was always that thing that I could do with my eyes closed. Mm -hmm. So we moved um, back up north to Pennsylvania. Um, I, it's her birthday today. And so when she did that, I um, became a professional organizer, but then I quickly got frustrated because people wanted to make their space look pretty. And I was like, wait, I want to go deeper. I want to understand the resistance. I want to understand mm -hmm. the clutter and feng shui um, helped with that. Oh, I love it. It's um, a conversation I've been having with most of the organizers about uh, how to be a professional as an organizer. So we've got to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to continue with this conversation about how, um, Organ and feng shui and, and decorating all go together to help you uh, change the energy in your house. I'm really excited to find out more about that. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network, and we'll be right back. The free one minute mail solution works for email too, and you can download it at the link below or over there. Maybe it's a, the link. And we are speaking with Deanna Kors um, of Space Doula, or you are the Space Doula. I think the the should be capitalized. <laughs> um, and uh, we were talking about fun, the intersection of feng shui organizing and um, interior de decorating or design. And tell me a little bit about how you used that new feng shui knowledge to, to bring that work to clients. Yeah, so when I, um, as I was saying previously, I was getting super frustrated as an organizer because people had 
closet full of 50 shoes and they're and I'd be like do you need all 50 shoes and they're like just make them look pretty um and I kept wanting to understand why people were holding on to things where the resistance was and that's mm -hmm. when I um, took a deep dive actually into the energy world so not just feng shui I became mm -hmm. a reiki master mm -hmm. um, a crystal energy therapist I went all in um in the energy world and when I, I actually had studied feng shui decades ago um and so I back to it and I had this like aha moment when I realized the Bagua map, which is a tool that we use in feng shui, could explain why people were holding on to things. It could explain the reoccurring clutter. Um, hmm. And that was that was like this huge light bulb. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can help people in this way now. Is it? Did you find that it was they just had the stuff in the wrong place in the home, and so it was tighter, or just stuck energy all throughout? Um, it's a little bit of both. both? You know, it's people think, um, they always think it's what they're, when they're feeling stuck, it's like money or relationships, right? Mm -hmm. you know, like, I just need more money and things will be good. I just need a better relationship and things will be good. And what I was starting to see is like, and I could see one of the things that you said when we started in your intro was our outer world is a reflection of our inner world. Mm -hmm. And so when I see somebody's house, I'm, um, People will tell me I'm intuitive. Um, I do not consider myself a psychic. I, if you walk down the street, I wouldn't be like, oh, I see this for you. Right. But when I can see somebody's home, I actually can start to see what's holding them back. Mm -hmm. And it's not, like I said, it's not always in the wealth area because they're like, oh, just come and make my wealth area look better. Right. I would see the clutter in another place and it's really following breadcrumbs. And based upon the Bagua map, which is an energy map and mm -hmm. it's what area of your home is related to what area of your life. And so when you overlay this Bagua map on your floor plan, I know that the back left corner of your house is the wealth area. The back right corner is your relationship. And then I can start seeing these patterns in people's houses and the lives based upon that. Yeah. Um, I love that the way you describe the intuitive piece, cause I am the same way. Um, and people are often like, well, why don't you need to come to my house before we start the organizing? And I'm like, because I can see it the day we get there and know what to do in like five minutes. And other people need a big plan. Like it's just a different way of, of working. And so um, that's interesting that it sounds like you do it a little bit more like me in terms of looking around and then solving the problem once you, you see it on the day you're getting ready to work. Is that I listen to language yeah and how somebody what's always interesting is I will start so I'll have somebody's floor plan I will have already overlaid the Bagua map on it and I'll get to know them I'll say you know sh tell me where you're feeling because they're right away like let me show you my mm -hmm. house like no wait I want to understand you I want to understand your life I want to know mm -hmm. where to amplify your life I want to know where you're feeling stuck and so we'll have a conversation around that and then I'll be like so tell me how would you describe your kitchen and the words that they've used to describe their kitchen, and let's say we're talking about relationships and there happens to be in the relationship area, will meet how they feel in their relationship. Yes, I have found the same mirroring scenario with the modality I use, which is the sacred many archetypes assessment. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's uncanny how, um, I personally don't think it matters what modality you use, you should, use or seek out a professional that has the one that resonates for you or you're interested in. Um, sometimes modalities are fun to do and they will almost always all tell you the same thing. <laughs> yeah. um, and so I love that. Um, yeah, so tell us a little bit about the Bagua map. Um, I know a bit about it, but probably some of my viewers do not. What, what can you say that kind of is the intro to Bagua? Yeah, so as I mentioned, it's an energy map. It looks like a tic-tac-toe board or um, a good friend and colleague of mine, she refers to it like a um, a pan of brownies that you divide into many pieces. <laughs> nine, and nine spots. Nine <laughs> spots, right. And they're not, so this is a little bit, I, um, I actually um, had some intuitive guidance that it's not necessarily nine equal. Like I don't divide a room through the middle. Energy yeah. doesn't flow in straight lines, right. but generally it is nine areas that look like a tic-tac-toe box 
over that you overlay your floor plan. Mm -hmm. um, there are different schools of feng shui. In the school of feng shui from which I practice, we use the front door to orient the Bagua map. So mm -hmm. if you are standing at your front door, the you know your door is going to either be entering your home in the area that's associated with your inner knowledge, your career, or travel of helpful people. Generally, I have had clients where they have a wonky floor plan or entering into another area. Mm -hmm. But you orient the map based upon that front door, and then you can see, like, that's my wealth area, that's my shift. This is associated with ancestral family patterns, mm -hmm. which is always fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> um, isn't it, though? Like, there, I think there's definitely generational... Well, now they're they're finding that some like hoarding is is can be genetic, mm -hmm. um, but I think too there's just situational generational things that are happening, trauma or whatever that come can come through as well. Um, yeah, interesting. Okay, so what do you what do you do you find that as well? Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. I mean, it just. For my own, I always do my own work, right? So yeah. I'm constantly, um, when I'm feeling stuck, when something's off, like, where is it in my house? Because it's such the, like, I have um, a client who's like, this is so much more fun than sitting in therapy talking about my mother. And there is absolutely 100% space for that. And this isn't at the exclusion of it. But right. together, it's another way that you can shift the energy around an area of your life where it's a little bit more playful. It's yeah. not quite as heavy as talking through. I love that. I love that clearing and rearranging spaces is actually such um, an opportunity for self-discovery and self-revelation. Um, uh, people don't always think it's that important. It, do you find it's the one thing people think is not the important part? And it's like, it's the foundation. You can't do anything without doing that. It is, and it's... Um, I can tell we probably both have that, like, you want to scream it from the back, right? Because right. it's the space, you are in your space mm -hmm. so much, right? And the patterns that um, that we have in our lives, they get um, implanted and not implanted, imprinted is what mm -hmm. I want to say, imprinted in our space. And so I find so often that I'll have a client who'll be like, oh, my life coach said, or my therapist said, or I went to this amazing conference and I discovered this about myself and they make changes, right? Mm -hmm. Step into their house. And then they find in a month, two months, three months, they're like, wow, I've slipped back to that same space. I'm like, because you stepped back into the same energy of your home. You didn't right. shift the energy where, and you're being surrounded by it and you're being impacted by that again. So it brings you Love back it. to where you were. Yeah, I found the same thing. And we're going to pick up after the break. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And we will pick up this pattern of how to have your environment support what you want to have changed in your life. Um, we'll be right back. The Streamlined Clutter Solution online course will help you gain control of your stuff and space. What are you waiting for? The links are here somewhere. Um, yeah. All right, so we were talking about shifting energy to support the changes you want to make in your life. Um, and I love that. You have to tie the insight you're having or the ch the desired outcome you want with the actual space around you so that it works together. Can you share a couple more thoughts about that? Maybe um, what order you should do things in? Yeah, that's, you know, people are always like, should I, should I feng shui my house first? Should I declutter it first? Um, and I really have um, a pretty specific order and not that you need to do your whole house this way, but you can do an individual space. So it's the same process that I would do if I was doing my desk, mm -hmm. or my garage, or my whole house. And the very first thing, and this is why I use feng shui a little bit differently than many, is I use it as an identification tool. Mm -hmm. so the first thing we do is use the Bagua map that we've been talking about to identify what space you should actually be changing. Because so often it's not the space we think, and then we wonder why the clutter's in the back, right? So when we can identify yeah. the root cause using function, using the Bagua map, talking it out, seeing the patterns in your house, then we're like, okay, this is the space that is going to make the biggest impact if I shift it. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you're like, oh yeah, there's this 
big, the garage is a mess and we need to work there. And the, yes, you do, but there might be something else that we could shift smaller that's going to make that job easier. Right. I love that. Mm-hmm. How many times do people call and the, like there's laundry all over the living room because their closet's too stuffed to actually put laundry away? Right. right. <laughs> like, well, we got to fix that first. So we have somewhere to put that. Yeah. And then the closet is actually associated with ancestral family and their family. There was a perhaps a pattern of holding on to things because there was there was some children, you know, and, and so there's this holding on. And so that when you can work with that space, then all of a sudden you get out to the garage and it's like things go really fast. Like that's right. the magic of it is once you can identify things, it's like when you can see something, you can't unsee it. Yeah. And it makes that process so much easier. Um, so uh, that's yeah. it's like identifying. Mm-hmm. And once you identify, then it's going through for you always start with decluttering. Right. Yep. It doesn't make sense to organize anything if you don't declutter, because then you're making space for things you, sh- you should be letting go of. Right. And you're moving it around six or seven times instead of just like, we don't even need it. <laughs> right. Right. So decluttering is always the answer. Right. That's where yeah. we start. And then you want to clean. Right. You want to clean the space. So if you declutter a corner, you want to get rid of the cup. You don't want to start putting new things on top of that. Right. Um, so you clean and then you organize, right? So now you know the items that you have, they're clean, they're organized, or they're decluttered, they're organized, and then they're decluttered, they're clean, and then you organize them, let me say that correctly. Um, and then we can bring the principles of feng shui in. Mm-hmm. We can look at the spacing of things so that she flows freely. We can look at the colors because Every those Bagua areas, those nine different areas in your home are all associated with a color, associated Mm -hmm. element, um, associated with symbolism. So we can start looking at, oh, wow, this is associated with water. This area we want this your career. We Mm -hmm. want to flow. And you've got a lot of fire there putting out the water. Right. Which is always my problem. A fire sign. So it all ends up like. I have to keep an eye on that. Um, um, I love that, um, too. There was something you said, and now I can't remember it. So keep going. (laughs) It'll come back. And then you can space clear, right? So space clearing is energetically, um, you know, I use things like people traditionally will say, oh, right. So you'll hear somebody say, oh, I need to sage my house. And those of us in the space clearing business tend to get a little prickly about that sometimes because waving a bundle of sage in your space is not necessarily, I mean, it will help. But again, like, is there a room full of clutter? I don't care how much sage you use. If you've got a room full of clutter, it's not going to help. Or it's going to be. Yeah, it's very practical magic. You got to go, you know, even, you don't even need sage if you can just wipe it down with, you know, clean it with some. Right. some natural product, <laughs> exactly. um, you know, clean the windows, people, it'll work. Well, what's fascinating is that from a feng shui perspective, your windows are the eyes of your home, right? So mm-hmm. if you're lacking clarity, clean your windows, grab right. some vinegar, some lemon, clean your windows. Right. Um, and I just remembered what, what it was I was, I was uh, interested in, and that's that the space around your things. Mm-hmm. People um often when they're running out of space just smoosh everything together and then they can't grab something without knocking over six other things and then they wonder why they're frustrated and it's like because you just spent four months picking up the mess you made by trying to grab the vanilla in the back of the pantry or you know the right moisturizer out of your your bathroom drawer so i love that i mean everywhere i go i try to make space you can just reach and grab stuff even if it's behind you can reach over and out without it falling over me too me too it's a very important part you guys everybody i have have a really cool story around that whole space and i had a client years ago who came to me because they felt like they weren't being seen or heard in their business and they're like all right i need to shift something i want to amplify my voice and so there's one of those nine Bagua areas is called fame and reputation. It's how we want to be seen in the world, what we want to be known for. And I looked at this space in their house, um, which is their living room. And 
all the furniture was like, like literally overlapping each other. So where you or I might float some furniture so that you can sit in all the seats, literally the couches were overlapping. So there was a whole section where you couldn't even sit. And so we talked a little bit more and this was somebody who was um, adopted. He's from an adopted family and he's gay and his family, his adopted family said, that's great. You know, we're cool with that, but can you please like not be very, don't tell anybody. Right. They were a large family and they were just like, let's just keep it to us. Messages there. (laughs) And so he always felt that he was on the sidelines, right? Mm -hmm. Like he couldn't actually like be fully who he is. And so we reached his furniture, gave it some more space, um, which was fascinating. And things shifted so quickly after that. Yeah, I love that story. It is amazing, everyone, how fast something can change by just doing that. Um, I had a client that was in a similar situation, not really feeling promoted at work and stuff. And when I went to their office, the stacks of paper in front of their desk were like this high. And so no one could see them when they walked by. And it was like, duh. Um, all right, we got to take one more quick break. Uh, I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And after the break, we will continue our conversation about feng shui, decluttering, and creating a fabulously energized space. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. For about 10 years, I had my desk 90 degrees from where it is now. I literally just pivoted it 90 degrees. And it was facing a doorway, so I thought I was doing pretty good with feng shui. And But I was often not really in the mood to work. Like, I would go in my office and be like, Oh, I'd rather be in the other room or I'd start something and I would have to take breaks between every single task I was doing and it was wasting a lot of time. And then when I started doing this TV show, I had to rearrange my office for lighting purposes because I had a window behind me and just shifting it to the other way. I come in here and I work for like, I get lost in my work. I do such deeper work. I'm like focused way better, kind of crazy. Well, there's two things that you said that make me wonder, like one is, so from a feng shui perspective in mm-hmm. terms of desk, which you didn't start out that way, but a lot of times we are, we're facing a wall, right? So our desk is right bumped up and then we wonder why we feel like we're not moving forward because we're staring at a wall. Right. So we do want to be able to see the door because our, our um, lizard brains mm-hmm. <laughs> feel safe. So we want to be able to see, um, yep. But, and we want a solid wall behind us. So if you had windows there and now you have a solid wall, that can make a difference. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing is what's interesting is the Bagua map, you can lay over your entire home, but you can also overlay it in a single room. And so it would be interesting to see which area you moved from and to. Yeah, I I can't remember off the top of my head. I did kind of do that because I have a door there and I have a door there. Mm -hmm. And that door doesn't have a door on it. It's just a space. So the desk used to face that way. And it was actually looking into my utility room, which also doesn't really have a door. It's like, I live in a very modern lofty space. So (laughs) it's like um, a shelving unit with hooks and stuff for my and and cleaning stuff. And then I'm like, so now it's over there and I don't have to look at it. I look out my beautiful windows in front of me and the window next to me which isn't that pretty of you but it's but better you have space, you know, <laughs> our souls actually want to interact with nature and yeah. so to be able to have that beautiful vision in front of you so like just i'm looking at beautiful scenery i'm looking at a utility room like yep i know and practical magic right from a practical perspective yeah, yeah i want to look outside more than i want to look out and you know it's, room. it's um it's interesting too because it's a little less depth from my desk to the wall than it was to the window when I had the desk the other way maybe like four inches and I thought I would feel very cramped and I don't so it's it's amazing how these little things can go but it brings me to my next question which I have a lot of tripped up on the rules of feng shui or they'll read a book and figure out a cure and then the cure becomes the clutter yes (laughs) (laughs) because they don't understand the whole thing I literally have a client with 
200 Buddhas because it was supposed to be a feng shui cure and like 8,000 Chinese coins. Like, he's got other issues, but <laughs> they're... So he I'm thinks for feng shui and it's helping and it's like, no, it's not. No. So what do you tell, what do you, what's your approach to that? Oh my gosh, I love that question so much because, you know, the cure becomes the clutter. Like, that's brilliant. And it does. Mm -hmm. um, so in the school of interior alignment from which I teach from, there's two rules of feng shui. Um, if it feels good, it's good feng shui. If it feels bad, it's bad feng shui. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So, Yes, I can tell you all the ways to um, shift the energy in your space based upon feng shui. But if it doesn't feel good to you, if you're not aligned with it, you're just going to have a bunch of Buddhas that you're like, oh, I don't connect with these. Right. So if you're not connected with it, if you don't like it, if you're doing it because I said so, like people be like, oh, just tell me what to do. And I'm like, tell me how it feels to you. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. that's where we, we always start with how do you want to feel? So that we can align how you want to feel with how your space feels. And a mm. hundred red ribbons hanging around your house, if you don't like it, it doesn't work. If you don't believe in it, it doesn't work. If you're yeah. just looking past it, it doesn't work. Yeah, I I love that. And, and, and bringing that intuitive piece, I think people don't trust themselves. I always kind of intuitively arrange my space as well that was good feng shui, but I didn't know till I started studying a little bit. I mean, I've taken like three workshops, let's be honest. I didn't get trained, <laughs> but, and then I'd look at it and be like, oh, that's why that works. So that's why that feels weird. And I could then adjust a little bit, but I'm trying to think. Oh, I had a room that my front door was solid bamboo with a side light of frosted glass. And, but my back door, which was directly behind it, you know, Right. Is it behind? I guess technical games in behind. Um, was clear, like it was on a whole glass wall. And so the energy would just flow through there and it would always feel like really hectic if you were standing between the doors. And so, you know, the thing usually is hang a crystal or something to to change the thing. And I didn't because they were covered doors, I didn't want a crystal in it because it would hit, get hit every time I opened or closed the door. And so I just got a giant floor vase to put just slightly overlapping the back door that was in front of the glass. And so it was glass pretty in the corner. It didn't get hit by the cantilever, but it slowed down the energy just enough. And it was like, yes. It's so, like, <laughs> I always say we don't make problems where there's not problems. Right. Like if you are not having problems with your money, then like don't go completely renovating your wealth area. Like we don't need to, there's enough problems in the world. We don't need to make them up. Right. right. So yeah. it's life. And it's interesting. Like I was thinking what was my most difficult client. And in some ways, yes, in some ways, no. And it was somebody who I said, what would you like to shift in your life? You know, what would you amplify? What would you like to change? And she's like, nothing. I'm like, why am I here? <laughs> my life is perfect. And I was like, then you kind of don't need me. Right. Like if you are content with your life, then let's not change anything, right? We don't need to make a shift, which I kind of doubted that it actually was because nobody's life is perfect. But. Right. People like to avoid, they cover up. Um, yeah. Interesting. We can uh, visit about this a little bit more and the piece about how to deal with clutter. Uh, when we come back, we've got to take another break. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And I'm talking with Deanna Kors of the Space Doula. And we'll be right back. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. And uh, Deanna and I are speaking about feng shui and clutter and organizing and shifting energy in your house and your life. All of it needs to work together. It all works together. And we don't want to cause more problems than we solve. <laughs> so decluttering is always first. Um, do you find that when clients work with you, the clutter comes back? Or is it a more permanent solution than when people just do their decluttering on their own? Right. If, if we get to the root cause, you know, think about the dandelion that's growing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you go in your yard and you just pull it with the roots, that a lot of time is what decluttering. Yes. Without 
intention behind it without the understanding behind it. And then another dandelion grows. But when you can get in there and you get those roots, like, you know how good that feels? When, yes. Maybe this is me, but like when you pull it out and you get all the roots and you're like, yes, that's how we open with intention and understanding. Um, it's a way to get to the subconscious. Um, we use feng shui to identify why there's clutter. So mm -hmm. it is lasting, uh, more lasting for sure. Yeah, I love that. It's the way in. It's like the avenue to to dig around and root around in there and and discover what the mysterious problem is. <laughs> yeah, I had a um, I had a really interesting client uh, years ago who, you know, she said help me with um, my wealth area. So I work with people all over the world, um, a lot long distance. But this was super fun because she was not far from me. Mm -hmm. So I went to her house and she's like, look at my wealth area. And it actually had, she had recently, her partner had recently moved in and they had all their stuff there that like duplicate furniture, right? And and yeah. their personal stuff. And it all went in this one room, which happened to be the Hello. wealth area. And so I always say you can't change somebody. Chris Carr actually is infamous for saying you can't change somebody unless they're in diapers. So right. you... <laughs> I didn't know she said that. That's brilliant. <laughs> we can't just go and like throw out this other person's stuff, right? Right. So right away, I'm like, all right, you're feeling stuff around money, but we can't change the wealth area. So where do we go? So I'm looking at the rest of the house. I end up looking because she starts talking about some of the conflict in communication with her partner. So we go in the kitchen, which happened to be the relationship area. And they had one small, you know, those metal stars, sometimes decoratively, they had a small one and a really big one. Yeah. In oh. the relationship area, you want things that I are. I know what that means. <laughs> there was a power dynamic situation happening there. Exactly. So I'm like, all right, so now I'm seeing a little bit what's happening relationship wise. It's difficult to be in a relationship with somebody unless you're in a relationship with yourself first, right? So in the Feng Shui Bagua map, one corner is a relationship. The opposite corner of the home is inner knowledge. It's own self-awareness, our own personal development, our intuition. So then I like, let's go back and look here, right? Let's look and happen to be their bedroom. And I get like you, right? Get intuitive hits about things. And I see this painting on the wall and I said, tell me about that. And she said, oh, that was from pr a previous partner who painted it for them next to her bed. And mm -hmm. I said, tell me what you were getting in that relationship that you're not getting in your current relationship. Mm -hmm. Everything from there, it was like that domino that easy. fell. And yeah. every, I mean, that was such an easy thing. And then, I do a lot with ceremony. So we did a ritual of letting that go. She could see what was, you know, she could now see what she needed to work on. All the other pieces, the clutter in that room ended up going. Her partner was like, yeah, I'm ready to let go of this now because yeah. their relationship changed. So, yeah, I, I'm sure it made him feel a little more uh, wanted and secure that he wasn't going to get kicked out just a few months later. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, interesting. I just had a client and I, I didn't work with her long enough to figure out what actually changed, but I walked into the master bedroom and she really loved the ocean and the sea and wanted it to be a relaxing, like beachy retreat. But the painting she had picked for over the bed was like a stormy sea. And then she had draped <laughs> fish net and some plastic fish I was like interesting what is this like a fishing disaster about to happen like how how's it going and she's like oh it never even occurred to me that that was a stormy sea and I'm like well you were intentionally decorating for beachy relaxing field tell me what's relaxing about this and she was like I don't know it was just ocean <laughs> It's never just, It's right? like, no, yeah. It's an ocean with a storm. And then so if you go one layer deeper and mm -hmm. see what room their bedroom is, you know, mm -hmm. was it in the wealth area, was it in the relationship area, 
if you look at that, then you can start connecting. Is that where there was frequent storms? Is right. that where there was some feeling of I've got to brace myself for the mm-hmm. in dessert? Yeah, it's interesting how all those things sort out. So we did remove the painting. I just don't know how long term that what changes happened for her. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was like, it doesn't seem that relaxing to me. No. <laughs> But we see it, right, because we're in our home so often and we turn off, you know, quite frankly, especially as women, we're, you know, we're often caught. Like, and so we become a little bit numb to our surroundings. They become so familiar that we stop seeing them. And so one really quick tip, take a picture of your space yes. and then take a picture. It is fascinating how that difference. Yes. Um, you can start seeing things that you weren't seeing before. And that's the real reason professional organizers should take before and after photos. It's Mm -hmm. not to figure out what to do with the space. It's so it can see it differently. And so that they can see the progress they make as they go through. Because it's so easy to forget that you started with 87 boxes in that room and you are down to 12 and you're only going to end up with four and they're in the middle of the messiness. And it's like, Mm -hmm. but it's not making a difference. It's like, well, you got to do four more. And then it'll all be great. <laughs> and it's a new normal, right? Like every time we, there's a new normal. So that's why I say like, people are like, does this work end? Do I ever get to like do my house and then I'm done? And I'm like, kind of no, never, because we're spiritual beings. We're constantly growing. growing. And as we grow, our house needs to grow. As our house grows, we grow. You know, it's this whole little, we up level. We continuously up level. Yeah, you have to okay. um adapt to new situations new activities new members only um like that old painting you were talking about um you have to you know how many of our clients don't clean out their extra clothes out of their new baby's closet and then wonder why the baby's crying all the time <laughs> or your adult children wondering why their adult children keep circulating back through and right. they have baby pictures in their house still yeah exactly or they like, haven't gotten like, rid of they haven't repurposed them into a generic guest room or a dojo or something yeah they still have the trophies and the dance picture you know like yeah. from when they were teenagers or younger even exactly i love that um i don't love keeping the stuff you guys i meant i love recognizing that you gotta let go of the stuff um or you don't even have to let it go all the way but re arrange it repurpose it switch the way it's featured so that it's not interfering um all right we are talking about feng shui decluttering space arrangement for energy um i'm miriam ortiz pino this is the streamlined connection on bold brave tv network and when we come back after this break we're going to kind of wrap it up and see how we can kind of give an overview of Applying these concepts can help you keep clutter at bay, can help shift the energy in your life and what might be possible for you. And we'll get to that when we come back. Get the Streamline Time Solution online course and learn easy ways to control your time and tasks. Links here somewhere, down there I think. And I am speaking with Deanna Coors of The Space Doula and um, I am interested in finding out more about this free resource you have for us uh, and and why everything is connected in your world. So tell us a little bit about that. Yes, the 21 um, tips to shifting the energy in your space. And so we've talked so about how it doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be um, cleaning out your entire attic for weeks on end. There are little ways that you can shift the energy. And so that's what this is. Um, is a PDF that gives you 21 different ways to easy peasy shift the energy in your space. I'll give you one of them. Um, A little um, sneak preview is open your front door. You know, your front door is the mouth of chi. Um, It's where the energy flows in. And so many people actually don't open their front door. They come in through the garage door. They, I had somebody who actually had um, their cat litter. They had like a um, drape in front of their front door and then all the cat litter boxes and then they're like yeah my career's not really going very well <laughs> you think <laughs> you know, it's like the energy in the house is a little off but it's that is open your front door daily make it part of a ritual greet yeah. the day greet the opportunities that are coming in 
I love that. It's such an easy tip that can make all the difference. I find that as well when clients come in through their garage door, or their side door, they just don't use the front door regularly. And then the energy stagnates. You got to send in some new air people. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for making that um, resource available to us. I can't wait to check it out myself. I actually downloaded it, but I haven't uh, opened the email to, to do the thing. I mean, I filled out the thing. <laughs> this I'm, now I'm, I'm beginning to realize I may not have actually hit enter yet because I was doing it. Freddie called me. So, <laughs> um, but uh, I love this. And I love that thinking about it from that perspective of that discovering what's going on for people. What is the mystery involved? What's the, you know, I often talk about organizing and decluttering as urban or suburban archaeology. You know, we got to look at it from a bunch of different uh, spots. So if you're interested in this, please check out um, the Space Doula. All the information will be in the description of the video. Um, and again, I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection. I want you to remember that if you tell all your friends, it's more fun to get organized together. And next time on the show, I've actually got, who do I have on the show next time? Oh, I have Monica Ricky, who is a friend of mine. Uh, I've known her for years. She's a speaker, uh, facilitator, moderator, and coach. She used to be a full-on professional organizer, but she does a lot of productivity dialoguing. And so I'm really excited to hear how she is growing her business with these other modalities and, and how it's grown over the years. Um, you can find out more about me at morethanorganized.net. And in the meantime, have a delightful day. We'll see you next week.